Hello, good morning. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Guys, as I said, I'm going to prepare a tutorial for script programming. Okay, Because as you know, in building management system, there will be some uh, controllers or DDC that you cannot do functional block programming. Because functional block programming is much easier to prepare than a script programming, okay? So as you know, in my new BMS uh, training station, I have three uh, backnet controllers, okay? So these three backnet controllers, I will be doing the uh, script programming, okay? So this will be my part one for this series of tutorial, okay? Now, guys, before we can do the script programming for this uh, backnet controller, first, we have to prepare something. Let's say we should be having a control panel, okay, wherein we can do the programming. Okay, as you know, I have several simple motor control. Let's say I have here two uh, small motors with fans. So I can say I have a two exhaust fan with control panel. Okay, so I will be doing that one or I'll be using that one for this tutorial. Okay, now first, uh, what I need to do is to add the add uh, district backnet controllers to my system okay so i have here my backnet uh, i have here my pms workstation okay as you can see here i have my automation server now my automation server will be the one responsible in communicating to these backnet controllers okay so basically i need to connect these three backnet controllers into my automation server so I'm using here BACnet MSPP network, okay? I have shown you already by my automation server uh, in my motor control uh, tutorial. I've shown you there the uh, communication port. Uh, actually, automation server, uh, this automation server, there are two communication ports, COM A and COM B, okay? So I'm using COM A, okay? Now, as I said, the controllers are connected to my automation server using bus topology or daisy chain, okay? Now, guys, the, the first thing I need to do is to create an interface, okay? So, my automation, since my automation server will be the one responsible in communicating to these backnet controllers, and my automation server is also communicating to my upper level of network. When I say upper level, this will be my um computers or my front bms front end computers that will communicate to the automation server then automation server will be the one to communicate to the connected backnet controller okay so the first thing i need to do here is i will create a new uh interface okay so i will create a new interface okay so the interface uh, we have several interfaces here guys okay Modbus interface, web service, backnet interface, internet, okay, and so on. Now, uh, our interest here is the backnet interface, okay? Now, there are several interfaces here that I will try also to do some tutorial for those beginners. Actually, my tutorial is for beginners, okay? So, if, are, if you are an expert, this is not for you, okay? These are for uh, beginners. Those new engineers, those uh, engineers, and those graduates of any technical course, especially mechanical or electrical engineering, if you want to uh, join this tutorial, you can always uh, do so, okay? So first, I will create this BACnet interface. BACnet interface, okay? As you can see, the part is server one, servers then automation server. Now you can rename BACnet interface. Since I have two ports here, so I will say BACnet interface. I will just say one, okay? Down next, okay. Then uh, network ID, okay. So I can say this is my network ID one, okay. Hopefully it will not clash with any network ID I have in my system, okay. So I will just use this uh, offered one network ID. Then I will create, okay. Now, okay. So I have here my newly created partner. So I have here application, then IP network also, okay, because there will be also backnet over IP, okay. Now in application, okay, IP network. Now here in my backnet interface, I will create the network, the backnet MSPP. So I'll, again, I will go to new 
Then MSTP network. Okay, the MSTP network will be the one that we are going to use to physically connect the botnet controllers into our automation server. So I can say but MSTP network one because as I said in my automation automation server I can create two uh, botnet MSTP. Okay, so I said this is with the first one next. Okay. Network ID. Okay. Now here, let me see what I will. Okay, I will just say uh, here. I can say network ID. Let's say two because we already have one. Okay. So MAC address I leave it blank first. Okay. So this is communication A. Okay, as you can see here, RS four eight five com A. Okay. Now we can also. So that is the one communication A. That is serial communication. Now it's already selected. Select. Okay. It is already selected. Now, if you want to select B, you can go to com B. But I want to uh, use A. Okay. So I'm using RS485 com A for my bucknet MSTP. Okay? I hope it's clear. Now we can create it. Okay. Now this is the newly created MSTP. Okay, so we already have, logically, we have created the MSTP network. Now, the next thing you need to do is you can uh, new backnet device, B3 device. Now, actually, my backnet controllers are B3 device. Okay, so these are B3 device. Now, again, you must be uh, sure what are the types of controller that you have. So for me, I have the B3 device. Okay. Now, actually, V3 uh, device, I have here the V3 device. Then there is an option here, learn. Learn is the one that you are trying to learn or discover what are the backnet controllers connected in your comfort A. Okay? So make sure the backnet controllers are powered up and you have established communication, okay? Sorry for that, Pana. You can see, you can see if it is communication, you will see the communication uh, LED is there. It keeps on transmitting, receiving, transmitting, receiving. It is connected to your uh, automation server. And also in your automation server, you can check the uh, communication port A. If you can see PX and RX, if it is lit, Meaning there's already a communication or communication is established in that one. Okay. Now we will try to learn. Okay. So we will try to learn. As you can see here, MSTP network one, then progress. Now again, the system is the one trying to discover or learn the connected uh, controller. Okay. Now, guys, uh, in doing this, my advice is first you need to check the serial numbers of the backnet controllers because if it will be discovered or learned by the system, now it will be displayed under the MSTP network. So the thing that will be displayed here, okay, as you can see, I already have here one. Okay, so uh, uh, two backnet controllers are discovered. Okay, so here, I have here LC5077641-1. Okay. Now, guys, you have to tell, you have to know what, what, which, uh, which uh, backlit controller is this one. So, as I said, you need to uh, note down all the, uh, note down all the serial numbers of your backlit controllers connected to your MSTP network. Then you need to specify. Uh, this backnet controller, these controllers will be responsible in the control and monitoring of this specific equipment. Okay, let's say this one, uh, LC507641. Okay, now I will just try to rename this. Okay, so that I will say, okay, by checking in the serial number and looking at my controller, then I said, ah, this controller will be responsible for my Phoenix Sourcepan control. So I will put here, okay. Uh, Twin exhaust fan DDC. Okay, so this will be my twin exhaust fan DDC. Okay, 
Okay, then the rest you can rename it based on your uh, network. Because if you're the BMS engineer, you will be having your list. What are the controllers that I'm going to use for all the uh, system that I need to control and monitor? Okay, so guys, uh, this is the simple uh, learning of the backnet controllers that is connected to your system. Okay, guys. So once you have detected it, okay, I have already here one B3 device. This is my uh, DDC for twin exhaust fan control. Okay, whatever is the location of that twin exhaust fan equipment. Okay, now guys here, so you have an application folder here. Here you will be the one, you will be creating the font. Okay, now guys, I will, that will be part two of my, this tutorial. So to wrap it up, the first thing I need shown you in this part one is how are you going to detect or include the backnet controllers in your BMS system. Okay, so I have here the preview. Okay, so from my automation server, I first I have created the backnet interface. Okay, then in my backnet interface, I have created an MSTP network. Then this MSTP network from here, I tried to learn the connected backnet controllers. Now you can also specify manually, but it's better to learn or discover the connected controllers by using by the system or using the learn option. Okay. Okay. So guys, uh, again, as I said, make sure your all controllers connected to your automation server are all powered up and you can also check the uh, transmit and receive uh, LED of your controllers. If it is really communicating and again in your automation server, you can also check ETX and RX for COM8. Okay. If it is blinking, blinking, meaning it is trying to communicate to the controllers. So if it is communicating to controllers, then that's it. Your controller is connected to your BMS workstation. Okay, guys. Again, if you are new to my channel, always help me in a way that you can subscribe, watch my videos, and you can also appreciate my the 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 the, uh, the the ads being played in my channel. In this way, you are helping me also, so that I can continuously give free tutorials to those who are wishing to join this exciting field of engineering. Once again, Santos Capillion will always end the tutorial by saying, "God bless us all," and.